mucho pan de la First on my list is Evernote. It is available on the iOS App Store, the Microsoft Store, and the Google Play Store. It is a note-taking app designed for organization and task management as well. Things are stored into our account cloud, which will make it very easy for you to access it on all your devices. For the pros, there is a free basic version that is quite comprehensive for a normal user. There are small things that could help with convenience but nothing you couldn't get used to. For the paid version, there's also a student discount which you can get 50% off for a full year of Evernote. Evernote is basically like an online notebook, so you can write anything from notes to to-do lists. They have tools like a web clipper. They can read your handwriting from photos or scans. It can identify 28 typed languages and 11 handwritten languages, and it also has a built-in scan. As for the cons, the offline access for the free version is only on desktop. The maximum note size is only 25 megabytes. That may not be enough for those who like to attach PDFs and worksheets to their notes as well. The monthly upload limit is 60 megabytes, and no collaboration services are provided. Since there are so many features, it may also be overwhelming for new users to share files the other user also has to own an Evernote account as well. Evernote also limits users to 250 notebooks. According to reviews that I've read, some have said that the interface is more focused on editing text, which may be a pro or con depending on what your style is. The next app is OneNote. It's available on the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, and the Microsoft Store. It can also be downloaded from their website for free. Most of its features are available in its free version. It can also allow for detailed sorting with different notebooks, sections, and pages. It supports handwriting, whether with a stylus or a finger, and that can convert that into text text. There's also a math feature, which can help with writing or typing in math equations for notes. They have tools like Clipper or Quick Notes. It works quite similar to Evernote, where it can help with organization, creating to-do lists, etc. It also allows for different types of multimedia in a note page. And according to this How to Geek review, OneNote is slightly better than Evernote in dealing with handwritten input. And if you're already used to the editing interface of Word, using OneNote will give you less of a learning curve. Another pro is that OneNote syncs immediately once change is made, and also gives you unlimited amount of notebooks. It also allows for notes to start from anywhere on the screen, which may be useful for taking notes in class. As for the cons, it could be overwhelming for new users. Maybe it's my own problem, but I've been using OneNote on and off for quite a few years now, but I still feel like I haven't explored all of their features that they offer. For instance, they have tags that may be useful for notes, where you can mark up definitions, to-do lists, uh, critical warnings, and things like that that would help with organization. While the free version has most of its features, if you invest in a paid version, it will give you support for local notebooks, saved into a hard drive. For the free version, OneNote will still sync notes stored in a OneDrive account to allow for offline access. For the paid version, you have the ability to record video and audio along with your notes, and also gives you version history. For the free version, OneDrive only gives you 5 gigabytes of memory, which is honestly not a lot. But if you upgrade to Microsoft 365 Home, you can get um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook for up to 6 people. And it also comes with 1000 gigabytes of storage on OneDrive. Just check with your school to see if they'll give you a Microsoft account. And if they do, chances are OneNote already comes with that. If you're thinking about switching from Evernote to OneNote or vice versa, there are programs to help with that where you can find with a simple Google search. Next, I'll touch a little on time management apps. For this, I only have one app, and that is Forest. Is available as a Chrome extension on the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store. It is a paid app on the iOS App Store, but it's a freemium app on the Google Play Store, which means that you can use it for free, but there are certain aspects of the app that will be locked to you unless you pay. Forest is basically a timer app which stops you from getting distracted by your phone or certain websites. I use Forest in the IV and it really helped me keep myself productive despite my very short attention span. I'll talk about some of the pros. It's built as a Pomodoro timer where you work for some amount of time and take a short break after before continuing to work. This method helped me stay focused for longer because I wasn't exhausting myself after three hours of studying. I was studying in small chunks so it kept my information retention rate higher and overall, I just think it was very helpful. Uh, this app also has a it has a pretty cool and cute art style. It is also not too expensive, even though I did I, my, I myself didn't purchase the app. The premium account itself costs around one ninety nine dollars, and it's also not impossible to use without paying a single dime. As for the cons, uh, the biggest problem I have with this app is that 
you cannot sync between platforms or between phones. That's because that is a feature only allowed on the paid version. So if you didn't pay, you lose your data. They also have a campaign that you are not allowed to participate in if you don't pay for it. It's a campaign where they plant real trees as you plant imaginary trees with your concentration. I actually just lost all the data in the app following my phone dying, so that kind of sucks. But overall, I think it's a good app and it's free. Free! It's cute. It's effective. It's like 3 o'clock over here. Welcome to Potato Cam. I couldn't set up my camera. So now we're here, filming on the webcam. I hope that all of you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful. I also hope you liked the photo of the sky that I took outside my house. Maybe a little stretch, but it could serve as a little reminder that even though the IB is very, very important and you should definitely, definitely spend a lot of effort trying to get the highest possible mark that you possibly can, you should also take time for yourself and give yourself a break once in a while. Go outside. Look at the sky. Staying inside all the time is not good for you. Catch y'all next time. Eventually I'll make a proper outro.